the love that he has for us. No greater love can be found. This morning, I just want to welcome each and every one into our youth department service. And our young people has blessed us and we are thankful for all that they're doing in worshiping and praising the Lord. And now as we get ready for the word of the Lord, I just ask us that we stay focused because God has a word for us. I will introduce our speaker and then we're going to pray after which our speaker will come and minister the word for us. And this is a wonderful young lady whom I was introduced to by our minister Siobhan Thomas. And you know, when you first meet someone, you look to see what kind of person that is. What is she like? And the first thing I noticed was that she was a child of God. She loved the Lord. And I think that is what, now this is just me thinking, but this is what brought brother, our minister Siobhan attention is someone that loves the Lord. And it's no other than our sister Bethany Thomas. And we're going to pray at this time before she comes. Gracious God and our Heavenly Father, we look to heaven. For you're the God that supplies all our needs as according to our riches and glory. Your daughter, Lord, is about to come forth, Lord, to give Lord, a thought that you have laid on our heart for this time of season, Lord, that we're living in. And I thank you, God, that you can find somebody young at heart that is able, Lord, to put their lives on hold to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. At this time, I pray the power from heaven, Lord, will fall down upon your daughter, Sister Bethany Thomas. And as she come, may herself decrease and may this power of the almighty God increase take over Lord God almighty move her from self into the realms of your presence we ask it in Jesus name amen and amen amen Bethany Thomas congregation congregation Bethany Thomas sister Bethany Thomas hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Can we just give the Lord a shout of praise wherever we are, whether it be in our home, whether it be at our job, whether it be on the street. Let us just give the Lord a shout of praise in this place because he is worthy. God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, you are awesome. You are awesome. You are amazing. You are amazing, God. You are amazing, God, and we worship you this morning. We lift up your name, Jehovah. God, we worship you. God, we praise you. God, you are worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Just begin to lift your voice. Just begin to shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. God, you are worthy. are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. When I think on everything that has happened in my life, sometimes all I can say is glory to God and hallelujah because he's done just that much for me. Hallelujah. And I give him the praise and the honor this morning. Hallelujah. 
I just want to bring you greetings to my bishop and first lady and honor them as the shepherds, not just of this house, but those who have pastored over me. It is an honor and a true blessing to sit under great leadership. I also want to honor my husband, Siobhan, Minister Siobhan Thomas. It is truly a blessing to get married um, and to have someone who can stand beside you and push you forward just as you are pushing them forward. It is a true blessing. Um, to be able to stand side by side with someone. And so I honor my husband this morning. And I just honor him for all, uh, more than anything, I honor the presence of the Holy Spirit, which is truly in this place. I don't know if you can feel him where you are, but I certainly can feel him. And he is truly in this place this morning, this morning. Uh, so it is Youth Sunday. And as our sister Chantel had mentioned, our theme for this Sunday is what fruit are you producing? Where is you, what vine is your fruit coming from? Um, and she's brought us a beautiful word from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 15. And I'm not going to read through the whole thing, um, but I have a specific set of scriptures um, that I'm going to be bringing to you from that passage, as well as from the passage from Luke chapter 6, verse 43 to 45. Um, and as I was sitting and pondering on the theme this morning, I was like, God, what do you want me to talk about? What do you want me to address? What do you want me to say? I know we're talking about being the, the branches connected to the vine, but what specifically do you have to say? And he said, he brought to my attention, he said, pay attention to the fruit portion. Every vine that is connected to a tree, every tree that blossoms produces some type of fruit it doesn't have to be a physical fruit it doesn't have to be an apple tree an orange tree a mango tree if you have to see a mango tree in jesus name i hope to at some point in my life but every tree produces some type of fruit whether it be a flower whether it be pollen whether it just be the leaves that grow as an extension of the tree every tree every vine produces something and so the lord said to focus on what is being produced specifically and so the subtopic he gave me this morning for the the theme of this youth sunday was what fruit are you producing what type of fruit are you producing and so i'm going to read through the first few verses of john chapter 15 and then we will go from there and it's john chapter 15 verse 1 through 8 and it reads i am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Keep that in mind. And already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, whatever you wish, some, some versions say whatever you ask, it will be done for you. Eighth and last, it says, by this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. And so prove to be my disciples. And this is the portion of God's word. We honor it by saying amen and amen and amen. So as I was reading through this scripture, I kept coming back to the fruit. The fruit. He mentions fruit over and over again. In just this one set of eight verses, he mentions fruit multiple times. And I said, God, why do you keep mentioning fruit? Obviously, we're talking about a tree. So obviously, we know that fruit comes from a tree. The tree has to produce something. So why would you have to mention it over and over? But I know many of you know that when God mentions something multiple times in one particular statement, he's trying to get your attention about something. And so here, he, told, he said to specifically pay attention to the fruit that this vine is producing. Verse 2 says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit will be pruned and those will be cut away and every branch that does bear fruit will be pruned to bear more fruit. 
I don't know how many of you have ever gone to a garden or know someone who farms, but normally when you have a tree or normally when you have a plant, the best way to get the plant to grow better is to have to prune it. You have to pick things off of it. You have to pluck things away from it that are growing, that are growing incorrectly to allow it for, that will not allow the nutrients to be able to get to the actual um, fruit itself. So you have to prune in order to grow more. But you can't prune if there's nothing being produced. And that is what Jesus is talking about here. He said, hey, listen, I am the vine. And if you are connected to me, you should be producing fruit. So if you're not producing fruit, then you need to look at your life. Because if I am God and I am the root and I, everything that comes through me produces, if you are connected to me, you should do nothing but produce. If you're not producing, then there's something wrong. You need to look at yourself. You need to examine where you stand. You need to examine your connection to the fruit because sometimes you might be connected, but you may be connected by one thin strand. And so even if you're connected by a thin strand, you're not going to produce as much as someone else. Oftentimes in the church, we look at other people and we say, well, why are they getting blessed more? Why do they seem to have more gifts? Why do they seem to flow better in their anointing? The question you have to ask yourself is, what is their connection to the vine? Because if they're connected stronger to the vine than you might be, that may be the answer to your question as to why they are producing more fruit than you are. The fruit that you bear will be, no matter what you do, the fruit that you will bear will be evident in every area of your life. And this is why Jesus makes it so important that you understand the type of fruit that is coming from your life because it will become evident in every area of my life. If I have the fruit of faith, we talk about the fruits of the spirit. If one of the fruits that I have in me is I have an abundance of faith, then faith will be activated in every single area of my life, whether it is natural or spiritual. Because sometimes we say it works in the spirit, but not in the natural. And that's not how Jesus operated. Everything he could do in the spirit, he could manifest in the natural. And so if we are a connection to him, we should be able to manifest both in the spirit and in the natural. You should be able to see manifestation in your finances in the spirit as well as in the natural. You should be able to see um, souls being saved in the spirit as well as in the natural. You should be able to see um, boldness come in you if you lack boldness in the spirit just as well as you do in the natural. You shouldn't be able to get on a stage and talk to someone and preach to a crowd, but you can't have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You can't tell me that that's all the fruit that you can produce. It's only in one area of your life. No, you produce just as much you, you, you do in the spirit as you do in the natural. And so that is when Jesus is talking about that your fruit must be evident in every area of your life. Other, otherwise, you're not producing. And not only that, what you produce is a reflection of the soil, the water, and the sun exposure that you receive. Everybody who's ever had a plant knows you need three things to get the plant to grow. You need good soil, you need to water it every once in a while, probably more than that, and it needs to be exposed to sunlight. Otherwise, it won't grow. You can't have good soil and good sun, but never water the plant. The plant will die. If you, if you don't have um, soil, but you have water and you have sun, there's nothing for the plant to take root in, so the plant will die. If you have soil, Oil and you have sun but no water, it will die. No matter which way you go, you can't have two and not three. Otherwise, the plant will die. The roots of the plant will not be able to take shape and to take form. So let's take this from the actual physical vine and physical plant itself, and let's put it in ourselves. Nutrients. When we talk about nutrients, what is that? That's the living word, reading the word of God, studying the Bible, studying what God's word says, getting into his written word. It says that this is the bread of life. If you are not eating daily spiritually, you will not receive the nutrients that you need in order to be able to move forward. All you'll be getting is water and sun, and that is it. And that will not be enough to sustain you. Not that you won't grow, you will not be sustained because you need nutrients in order to grow. When, they have a, when you have a child, you have to feed the child. Why? Because if you don't feed it properly, then the child will not grow up correctly. They will have deformities. They will have malnutrition. There is such a thing as malnutrition. You are malnourished. You don't have enough nutrients to live and survive. And so nutrients, getting into the word of God, that is our nutrients to be able to 
activate what is in us. The next part is water, sanctification, the spirit, getting into the presence of God. My question to you is, is how much time are you spending not just in the presence of God? Because that's nice. We can spend time in the presence of God. But how deep are you in the presence of God? Because how many of you know you can water a plant every three weeks one time that plant will still die just because it got water once does not mean that's enough water to keep the soil activated so that it can continue to give the plant nutrients for it to grow you have to continually water it otherwise the plant will wither up and die how many have we seen that have come through the doors of the church that have sat down and they got a good word? Oh, yeah, that was a good word, pastor. That was a good word, bishop. Yeah, that was a good word, deacon. Give me a word from the Lord. I need a prophecy. But you don't know how to get in the presence of God yourself and get the water that you need to water that thing that God has placed in you. So what happens? The word withers up and dries. And then the prophecy that you received three years ago can't come to pass because there's no nutrients to fuel it not just in the prophecy itself but in you you don't have enough in you to be able to push that thing to come to pass you can't produce enough and so water is just as important as the nutrients and the third thing the sun exposure now when the lord said sun exposure i kind of laughed because it was a pun i was like ha huh, sun exposure son son of god that's nice. I'm sorry, I like the kid. But truly, sun exposure is just as important. If you don't give the plant any sun, the plant will never be able to take the water and the nutrients and grow from it. It needs a light source. We need a light source. Allowing God, sun exposure, this is what the Holy Spirit said to me, allowing God to expose those areas that need light to give them life. We oftentimes like to hide ourselves back from God and say, God, you can, you can shine your light here and you can shine your light here and maybe over here. But this little area right here, don't you touch it because this is my little dark closet that I don't want nobody to know about. I don't want nobody to see. I don't want nobody to touch. My skeletons are in there. The things I don't want to deal with are in there. My secret sins are in there. Sometimes my exposed sins are in there. But I just don't want to deal with that. So you can touch your light on everything else in my life except here. What happens? You still end up dying spiritually why because you can't expose a plant to one one half of the plant to the sun and the other half of the plant don't get the sun that doesn't make any sense so then one half of the plant is alive and the other half of the plant dies but what happens at the end of the day is no matter which way you go the plant in whole needs the sun it needs the sun's exposure if it does not have it on its if it doesn't have it in its entirety what ends up happening is that the dead part will start to overtake the part that is alive how many of us have been in a place where we are spiritually alive in one place but spiritually dead somewhere else and then all of a sudden we're spiritually dead everywhere and we're like how did I get from being spiritually alive in worship but in my prayer life I can't see any growth and that's just because you were expose the sun to your worship but you didn't expose them in prayer and so your prayer has not been exposed to the sun and therefore your prayer life withers your worship then starts to take effect then next thing you know your praise starts to take effect you being able to walk in your gift starts to take effect and next thing you know you're sitting in the back of church and you're like I don't want to I don't I, mm -mm. I'm not gonna talk I'm not gonna say nothing I don't even know where my relationship with God is anymore why because one area of your life was left in the dark and you thought it was enough to expose the rest of you to the sun. But no, you need all three things. They are necessary to grow and each type of component Watch this. Each component will determine the type of fruit that you produce. So yes, you can have good sun, and yes, you can have good water, but if you have bad soil, you will still not get good fruit. Just because you have good soil and good sun, if you have bad water, you will get bad fruit. It doesn't mean that you won't produce, but the question is what type of, uh, what type of produce would you have? That's nice. God says, oh, I see that you're producing, but mm, have you ever been into a bad apple that's just bitter 
and gross. When you eat it, it's mushy and it tastes sour and it doesn't taste like an apple should taste. That is the occurrence of not missing one of the three. No, that's the occurrence of one of the three not being exactly what it needs to be in order to produce good fruit. So yes, I have a good, I have good, good land. Let's say, for example, I have a good land and I want to plant an apple tree. I like apples, guys. I want to plant an apple tree. But I know that this side of my farm has great soil. But this side of my farm has horrible soil. So I decide to plant on this side. All of it has great sun exposure. All of it gets great water. I water around my trees every day. But when I go to eat the apple at harvest time, ha, ah, Holy Ghost, help us today. When I go to take the harvest, when I go to reap the harvest that God told me I have to reap in every season, when I reap, what do I reap? I reap bad fruit. Why? Because I didn't give it the right soil so that it could grow correctly and get the correct nutrients and get the right type of nutrients to produce the right fruit. Yes, I can be sitting in a place and I can be spiritually growing and I can be in worship. And yes, and we're going forward in worship. But just because I'm not being fed correctly, my produce, what comes out of my mouth will be an ex will be a connection will be the extent of whatever the soil I was planted in that is why the lord says it is important to know one where you are planted and two to be planted in the first place that's why church hopping is not that great at times because sometimes it takes a season for you to be planted somewhere so that you can get some nutrients so that you could grow you can't just say this is my church on sunday this is my church next month this is my church the following month and you never plant yourself somewhere if you can't plant then you can't grow that's how it works it's a cycle. It's cyclical. If you don't plant, you can't grow. And so these three things, nutrients, water, sun exposure, the type will produce the type of taste and the type of produce that you receive. If your natural man is being fed junk, <laughs> you will produce fat. Let's just call it what it is. So if your spirit man is in taking darkness, what do you think you will produce? Whatever comes in you is going to come out of you. That's why the Lord says to guard your heart, guard your ears, guard your mind. Those are the places where what comes in you will be produced out of you. The Bible says in Luke chapter 6 verse 40, 45 to be specific, it says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Two verses before that, it says no tree could bear bad, no good tree can bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. So it is, it, is, it is a law that has been established by God. If it's good, it produces good. If it's bad, it's going to produce bad. So you can't expect that a good tree will produce bad fruit. You can't expect that your bad tree will produce good fruit. So stop in the season of your life asking God, why? God, why am I producing this way? Why does my life seem to look like this? He said, take a look at your tree. Take a look at that, what you are producing. If you are not producing good fruit, then the source that the fruit is coming from needs to be re-examined. So my question to you this morning, and I'm coming to my close. My question to you this morning is, are you producing, first and foremost, are you producing any fruit at all? Because we can't even begin to examine the fruit that we produce if we're not producing any fruit, period. If you see no evidence of change in your life, you cannot expect to be 30 years into your Christian walk, 30 years into your life serving God and saying that, God, the day I got saved and the day today are the same. I've been the same in 30 years. If that is the case, examine, are you producing any fruit at all? Because if you're not, then you need to go back and see, is your connection to the vine as strong as you think it is? Because your connection to the vine should be an example of the fruit that you will produce. Because God don't produce bad fruit. So you can't tell me in 30 years that you've been in ministry, and 30 years you've been walking with the Lord, and 30 years ago when you got saved, you looked the same as you did 30 years ago, and there's no change in your life. The family that you've been praying for for 30 years still ain't saved. Why? Because you 
yourself, not your brother, not your mother, not your sister, nobody else, but God gave it to you. You said yes to the Lord, so you should be producing the fruit. You are the one connected to him. So your life should be producing. The second question I have for you this morning, is your fruit sweet or is it sour? This goes back to what type of fruit is being produced. What type of nutrients are you getting? What type of water are you getting? What type of exposure to the sun have you received to know what type of fruit you will produce? So is it a sweet fruit? Is it beautiful? Do you have plenty in the time of harvest or do you have little? All of that is determined by the type of fruit, the nutrients, water, and sun exposure that you get. Does your spiritual walk, and this is my last question to you, does your spiritual walk and talk <laughs> match your natural fruit? We had our youth, we have our youth calls on Friday night, um, and we've been running through the course of identity and talking about identity and how it's important that what you say, what you do, who you are, what you wear, what activities you participate in, what you talk about on social media, what you post, because this is a youth Sunday, what you post on social media, what you say to the friends that are around you, what you say to the adults above you, what you say to the children underneath you, how all of that is connected to your identity. And if our identity is supposed to be found in Christ, how do we look in comparison to the Christ mirror? And so my question is, so does your walk and your talk match the fruit that you say that you produce because I can't say that I produce humility but every time you see me I have a prideful spirit that's not matching the tree that I claim that I have but what no matter what the case is the fruit that you get will be the tree that I bear so even if I tell you that my tree is a tree of humility if you eat the pride that's what I have whether I want to accept it or not that's what I have. And so the question is, is so does your walk and your talk, when people go to look at you, do they see the fruits of the spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. Do they see the fruits of the spirit? Do they see the fruits? Do they see the display? Because when Jesus walked on the earth, his walk and his talk and his words and his deeds and his actions, they all matched. Everything matched. Even though they wanted to say that Jesus would contradict himself, he could come back with a rebuttal and say, no, but this is what was said. And people could back that up because they had seen not just his character, but they had reaped of the fruit that he produced. And so they knew that who he said he was and what he was were a match. So I was, as I was going through this because this hit me just as hard as it probably has hit a lot of us. I was reading through even some of the biblical examples of the people that produce fruit and not only did they produce fruit in the spirit but it gave natural produced pr products which at the end of the day gave a glory to God. I wrote down a few. Mary, the mother of Jesus, she produced faith because at the age of a teenage age, we're talking youth Sunday, at the teenage age, the Lord visited her and told her, you're going to have a child. And she said, okay, be it unto me. Didn't know what the world was going to look like after that. But hey, you said it, so let it come to pass. Ruth, she produced service. She left her home. She said, Naomi, where you go, I go. I'm going to a foreign land. I don't know nobody. I don't know nothing. I don't know my husband's gone. Your husband's gone. I don't even know if this is going to work out as a mother-daughter-in-law mother relationship, but I'm going. And she served, and it produced a husband for her. Noah, faith. He, had a, he produced faith when God told him the flood was coming and it hadn't rained in all those years and everybody told him, hey, it's not raining, the flood ain't coming. He produced faith and what happened, his whole family was saved. Joshua, leadership, what did it do? It got the children of Israel through the wall. 
and to the promised land that God had promised him. David produced boldness and he was able to slay Goliath and then be able to lead the children of Israel for years afterwards. And Esther, she produced obedience. And that obedience to go to the king, even though it could have gotten her killed, allowed her people to be saved. So my question is, when we sing songs about giving ourselves away, and when we quote scriptures about how we need to keep the talents that we have and use them for the Lord, what, are, what kind of talent, what kind of fruit does that look like? Is it really looking like what God has asked of us? If every branch connected to God's divine vine produces good fruit, would people be able to pick from your life? and gather that they come from the same source, the heavenly source. Would people be able to pick from the fruits of your life? Would people be able to say that, oh, Bethany, she gets up in the morning, she produces the fruit of prayer. And so every time I call on her to pray, I know that something's going to happen because I've seen how prayer works in her life. So I know that when she prays, there is an, uh, there is an authority and there is an anointing when she prays. Or is it the opposite? When she prays, nothing happens, nothing changes, so why would I go to her for prayer? That is my question to you this morning. As we go through this, as we have talked about being connected and abiding in the vine, the ultimate question we have to ask ourselves is, are we abiding? And if so, what are we producing? And so I hope this word this morning has blessed you. I hope this word has challenged you this morning to re-examine your life as we see corona is lifting from different states, different countries are coming out of quarantine, people are getting ready to come back into the house of God, go back into the workplace, go back into school. But my question then to you is, is are you going to be the same person you were in March when you left? Or are you going to be the person that God has called you to be? Have you used this time wisely? And if not, it is not too late. And so I'm going to pray at this time. And for those that are not believers, those who are unsaved, I don't know if you have, um, if the number should be on the bottom of the screen. But if you are not saved, even if you need prayer, please call the number at the bottom of the screen. Talk to someone. We are here. We are here to see each other grow. Iron sharpens iron. We want to see each other not just make it into heaven, but to see other souls get saved as well. And so I'm going to pray at this time. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord God, that you, your word is never, is ever changing, Father God. Lord God, that every time we read, we get new revelation on what you are trying to speak unto your people. And Father God, I pray this morning that as we take this, Father God, not as a whoop and holler word, but Father, a word that would cause us to examine our lives. Lord God, it would cause us to look at ourselves and see where have we fallen short, Father? Where have we not produced? Where have we, where has our connection to the vine been lost, disconnected, Father God? I pray that as we examine and as you let the sun expose those places that are dark, Father God, that you, God, would bring light. Father, and not only would you bring light, but Lord, that we would allow ourselves to be exposed and Father, to change and to grow so that, Lord, we may produce for your kingdom, that we may produce for your glory, that others may see and be drawn to the cross of Calvary. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for every unsaved believer, every believer on this on this um, Zoom, every believer on Facebook, every believer that will see this after the fact that is unsaved, God. I pray that you would draw them nigh to the cross. God, those who are going through a struggle and through a pain, we know the pandemic is not over. We know that there is unrest in the country. And so, Father, I pray that you would cover the hearts of your people. You would speak peace. Lord God, into this land. Speak peace into the hearts of people. Lord God, show yourself mighty and strong in this country, in this place, in the world. Take your seat, Holy Spirit. Father God, we give you the seat. We give you the throne once again, God. And we say this is yours. Our lives are yours. Our hearts are yours. Father God, that we may look more, we may talk more, sound more, act more like you. 
God, I thank you and I praise you for your word because it is, it is, it will not return unto you void. And so God, it must produce because it is your living word and your word will produce, Father. And so God, I thank you and I praise you and I honor you this morning. And it is in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God keep you. In Jesus' name.